It's been an it's been an interesting weekend so far. Good, bad, nothing major. Uh, it was a long work week last week, and so I really needed the break this week. We have Keith joining us. Hey, Keith, how are you? Um, Keith is apparently off of his uh, suspension and can actually join us. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! I will apologize right now for any Patriots fans that might be might be out there, but I am going to revel in the fact that for the first time in 11 years, the Patriots will not be going to the postseason and that my beloved Dolphins were responsible for making sure that they did not see the postseason this year. I'm quite happy about that. We take our joy where we can get it. So Merry Christmas, uh, uh, happy Christmas present to, or early Christmas present to me um, from my beloved Dolphins. Note, I'm sporting Dolphins colors. Yay, Dolphins, Dolphins tiki shirts. We have four cocktails. I think it's four cocktails that we've uh, lined up for this evening. Hi all, hi all seven of you. Um, we're we're back for another session of this. We're getting down toward the last couple of the last, yeah, these are the last two before the the year changes. Um, so, hey, uh, not that we're planning on stopping this. I think we're gonna keep going, keep doing this. There's no reason for us to uh, for us to stop unless you tell us you want us to stop. Please, yeah. hey, something's burning. What? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's an, that's the incense. Yes, don't, we, we know that something is burning. Anywho, um, all right, so, uh, Star and I have to do a toast, because we always do a toast. Right. Um, I don't think we should use either of these, because we're no. going to be drinking those right. this evening, so we should use something else. Right. Is there something but, new? There, there is. want to toast there, to it? There is. There is something new. Um, would you yeah. have a preference as to this, this, or like this? To okay, this. all right. So um, I did make a, uh, yet another pilgrimage to Total Wine the other day off in uh, Maryland. Hi, Kristen. And um, they, uh, they have a very nice rum selection over there. Um, and they also have an exclusive relationship with Foursquare to produce Dorleys. Um, so, you know, there was some Dorleys was purchased yesterday. But uh, they always have something that I haven't seen before. And uh, we... So we picked up a couple of things, uh, one of which is um, a new version, or at least new to me, of the Papa's Pilar. So usually, I usually keep a bottle of the dark rum on hand and recently had a taste of it from the, um, the advent calendar. But this is, uh, this is something new to me. This is the Marquesa brand. I'm not sure, can you see that? Marquesa, Marquesa brand, um, which is aged, I believe, in bourbon yeah, cask. I believe, yes, bourbon cask, yeah, bourbon cask, as opposed to the other new version of their dark, which is um, finished off in sherry casks. Um, so we're going to try this. Uh, the other nifty thing we picked up um, is because of that relationship with Foursquare, uh, apparently they are now releasing a series of private casks, uh, private cask selections, specifically for Total Wine from Foursquare Distillery. And so this is going to have to be opened at some point. Yes. Um, this may be our, our Christmas rum. We may pop that open and, uh, and see. Yes, there were a couple of bottles of this that were brought back from, uh, from Total Wine. So I, I, but I think we're going to try the, uh, the Papa's Pilar this evening. Uh, we're going to reach in and uh, we can do a shout out to... Kristen, we've got a David, we've got a... Colleen, Colleen. Keith. Hello all. Yeah. Hello all. Kristen, yay! Uh, it's okay that you missed us last week. Um, we were just doing more Coquito. Yeah. Yeah. And and the Coquito was, was not as good last week. So, you know, you, you made the right Coquito session. Right. And there's, there's no Coquito this week. Right. None. Nope. Well, there's some in the fridge, but we will not be drinking it in front of you this evening. Um, so we have once again done some changes on the technical side. Whoa. Uh, let us know uh, how things are. As far as camera and do you have your mic on? Yes, and uh, sound yeah, and yeah. can people hear me? Uh, network and connectivity and flipping and all that stuff. Am I am I projecting too much? Because last week we had a problem with wow, lower your mic, you're <laughs> so loud. I'm like wow, okay, well. Um, oh, you were going to give a cut shout out to Cotton and Reed, and I. I, I was, I time. was. So the, we have these lovely tasting glasses that we got uh, from Cotton and Reed. I don't know if you can read the cotton and read on them. Uh, we've actually had these for uh, a year and a half yeah. or so. 
Um, I think we picked these up at their 10th anniversary. We got it with the uh, port cask. Right, at their, yeah. tenth, at their 10th. Right, so um, yeah, we love these glasses. They're a really nice tasting glass, and they remind us of the, our favorite rum distillery in Washington, D.C., of that which there aren't, aren't a lot, too. Yeah, forever. we haven't seen in forever. They are doing outside seating, but we're just really not comfortable making the trek into Washington, D.C. for food, drink, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. We will go in to do, like... Uh, a little bit of shopping. A little bit of shopping, but it's I like... I want to take my mask off. So. Right, yep. So um, here's to Cotton and Reed. Uh, they do good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, Papa's Pilar is doing some good stuff. This is a blend from all over the Caribbean uh, and various other places. So, we'll see. We'll see. It's a lovely color. Lovely, lovely color. Ooh. Oh, there's a... That's... Um, you can taste the bourbon-y oh. cast. There's a, there's a little... Like an orange rind. Mm-hmm. Definitely on the back end of that nose. Well, Chris says we look and sound much better, but she's also on a better computer. So. Oh, and we're, we're not going to play around with them and, and do the... Uh, it, break, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, that sort of thing. No. Uh, no. no. All right. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a spice scent to this that I can't place. It's a woody, casky. I mean, you're really smelling the bourbon cask there. Maybe. I think there's, well, yeah, there, I mean, there definitely is a wood, there's almost a little hint of smoke to that, maybe the char off the, yeah. but I thought it was a virgin um, cask. Well, a virgin cask doesn't mean it's not charred. Um, all right, well, I'm going to taste it now, okay. and we'll see. So, uh, a toast um, to, to... To vaccines. To vaccines, to Christmas, or whatever uh, holiday celebration you are Solstice, celebrating this Kwanzaa. year. Because Lord knows finished. we need it. Spaghetti so, Monster. Right. Uh, Festivus. Festivus, right. Festivus, yeah. The airing of grievances. No, let's yeah. not. Yeah. We're not going to do an airing and, of grievances. And Santa Claus has gotten his COVID vaccine. Dr. Fauci has confirmed he personally gave Santa Claus his vaccination. And so tested is, him for the antibodies. So. Right. So he has antibodies. It's safe, to, it's safe to have Santa Claus in your house. Oh, and we have found out. From the CDC, that Santa Claus does not need to abide by any of the travel restrictions. He has been exempt ah, from okay. the travel restrictions. Right. Yes. Uh, let's just hope he visits the United States before he visits UK. Because, yeah, um, okay, that's a shot at the UK. I'm sorry. That's that's uncalled for yeah. uh, to all the people that we might know that are in the UK. We're, we, Ryan. We're yeah. Like, yeah, we're with you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, to vaccines, to rum, to... Rum making vaccines go down better, I guess. How's that? You could fool me into thinking this is not rum. Wow, that's... Um, that is not at all typical of um, the Papa's Pilar. That Papa's just... Pilar is usually very, very sweet. Um, the, the stir, probably the, sugar added. This definitely um, has a sweet front right, end, but, not, but it it goes away quickly. Yes. There's definitely... There's definitely some... Uh, there's definitely the oak. Yeah, um, and a lot of body and uh, character. Yeah, that, that middle note is still... There's a spice thing that I'm not, mm. I'm not catching, like a cardamom or something that's in there. That, that is very nice. Um, hmm. All right. Well, I mean, in the tradition of um, drink what you like, but know what you are drinking. Um, thank you, RL Seal. Um, I'm going to have to go um, play around and figure out exactly how they're how doing they this. How they did that and um, how they played with it. Right. Because yeah. uh, I want to know um, yeah. and where their juices and that sort of thing are coming from. The, the Papa's Pilar Dark, um, just their standard dark, uses um, juice uh, from... Juice. By juice, I mean like uh, molasses produced from uh, or fer fermented product from uh, Florida, around the Caribbean, and South America. So they're buying up uh, product and then uh, blending together. Um, this is tasty. <laughs> this is tasty. I'm going to have to have some more of this. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set this aside because we have other rums that we need to drink. 
So uh, if you missed the preamble to this, where we were just um, just starting um, just starting out, if we're drinking it straight, if we're drinking it straight. Um, there are very few things in this householder that are straight, but um, yeah, we're actually de drinking this. We are drinking this straight. Um, no dilution, nothing else. Um, but the Papa's Pilar is not what we are primarily going to be drinking this evening, despite the fact that that is, that is yummy. Um, that special release, rum finished in whiskey barrels. Well, yeah, okay. Um, we, uh, well, my dear wife was on a... Um, on a Zoom call, um, talking about uh, rum and rum products, um, and we were recommended by this, recommended to this by um, Shannon Mustafar. She was leading it. She was leading it. Um, bartender from New York that uh, we like to follow. She's done uh, a book that was largely acclaimed. We have a copy, Modern Tiki, um, Tiki Modern, right? Yeah, yep, um, and. The, the rep for the rums that were being talked about happened to be online. And um, fluke, uh, luck, happenstance, whatever, they sent us a couple of sample bottles um, of their product. And that's great because we can't get their product here otherwise. So um, we have uh, two bottles of rum here. Um, and both of them still have most of their contents, but certainly not all of their contents. Uh, the first is uh, the, so these are both by, um, uh, they're, they're both Ron Cologne, so Rum Cologne, uh, out of Salvador. Uh, so this is their Salvadoreno. This is a high proof rum, so it comes in at uh, 111 proof. That's 55.5% alcohol. Um, this is a column still rum, so it's a pretty clean rum, uh, but it is a little on the overproof side. So this is uh, in the... Puerto Rican, Virgin Island, Cuban styles of rum. So we're expecting a, a pretty clean flavor to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to try this in a couple of cocktails that call for Puerto Rican uh, rum. The other expression that we have also is the Salvadoreno, 111 proof. But this is a coffee-flavored rum, uh, I presume with actual coffee or coffee beans. Uh, finest sugar cane uh, from El Salvador. Uh, so again, this is going to be uh, like a Puerto Rican rum, but it's going to have some coffee notes to it. And what we're going to do with this, for the most part, is we're going to play around with cocktails that would normally require Kahlua in them and see if we can sub out the Kahlua um, and, and make do with the coffee flavor that is in the Ron Cologne. Uh, Cologne. Um, all right, so that's that's what we're going to do this evening. So we're going to do four cocktails. Who wants to know if you injured your head because it looks like you have a band-aid on there. It looks like, no, it's a it's a Santa Claus hat. See, there's a Santa Claus hat, but I got to have my drinking hat on. And I thought it would be better to do it this way than put the Santa Claus hat over the drinking cap because, well, then you can't see the drinking cap and, and all of the... Uh, all of the various buttons and that sort of thing that are, that are on there. And Lord knows you got to do that. If you miss the one that was on Star Santa Hat, it just says, drink more rum, which I can hardly get behind that. Um, I can also hardly get behind the people that gave us that button, which is the fine folk at Lion Distilling. And they produce um, some really lovely uh, regional local rum. Um, so, yeah, there we go. But uh, to, to get on with the Ron Cologne... Um, what are we going to do first? Okay, here's here's my deal. Uh, I think that if you are going to do a tasting of a rum, that uh, and you want it in a cocktail as opposed to drinking it neat. Oh, that reminds me. If you are going to drink a rum that you have not had before and you want the sort of purest expression of that, um, but you still want it in a cocktail, I'm going to tell you go with a daiquiri. Um, and so that's what we're going to start with. We are going to do a daiquiri made with the 111 proof Salvadoreno uh, Ron Cologne. So if you've been watching for a bit, you may know where I'm going with this. We are going to do uh, three quarters of an ounce of a um, simple syrup. We're going to go three quarters ounce of lime juice and we're going to go two ounces of the rum. Um, now it occurs to me that I do not have my simple syrup out here. All I have is my spiced syrup which I'm sure would make a fine daiquiri, but it will kind of beat up all over the Ron Cologne. So we're not going to do that. So I'm going to wait for, for Star to get that from the, the back room. 
Um, so that'll be uh, just a moment. In the meantime, I can of course go ahead and just do the lime juice portion of this. Uh, so we need three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. The lime is the white cap, right? Yep. Oh look, she's fast. There we go. Three quarters of an ounce. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. There we go. Uh, now, for all of you daiquiri lovers out there that might be going, I hate those proportions. What are you doing? Those are the wrong proportions. Look, you do you, I do me. This is the way I, I at least start with my daiquiris. Three quarters of an ounce simple, three quarters of an ounce lime, two ounces of the spirit, and then I can modify as needed depending upon the quality of the rum and the various flavors of the rum. If you were making a daiquiri with a significant sweet component, for instance, you would want to cut back on the simple syrup. Um, if you were making a daiquiri with a rum that has a really high tannic content, you probably would want to cut back a little bit on the lime juice. Um, and there's no reason why you have to keep those in proportion with one another. Um, no reason at all. But this um, gives me a consistent basis, right? I know the first daiquiri I have with any rum that I do on this bar is going to be made with these proportions. And so I can compare those in my head. Whereas if you're already trying to mix and match different proportions before you have that first drink, then the drinks aren't really comparable to one another. So that's, you know, that's how I approach making a daiquiri with a rum I don't know. So there's one ounce. Doo, doo, doo. There's two ounces. On Cologne, 111. Yay! Um, I need one of these, and I'm going to need some ice. I have ice. I have a scooper. Yay! That works. Cool. Ta-da! Hold this up. I do have some mint upstairs, um, however, that, that I uh, could do with, um, you know, doing a couple of snips of that and putting it in the cocktail. However, uh, that mint was bought from a supermarket and it was kind of limp and wilty to begin with. So I shoved that guy in a bunch of ice and water and it kind of perked up and then it went, yeah, no, I can't, I just can't do this and sort of wilted over. But it's okay. I think what we're going to do is garnish this with um, some dehydrated lemon or lime peel instead. Of, of the mint. So here we're going to go ahead and shake this up. All right, so you can see the uh, the frost on the uh, shaker. So if I run my finger down that you can see there's a line now. Yep. All right. So we're going to crack that. Oh look there's fresh mint. It is really nice having a bar back. Let me just tell you it is so nice. Lindsay. We need a couple of coops. Coop. And uh, a Hawthorne strainer. Um, if you really, really, really object to ice chips in your uh, daiquiri, I'm not sure I really object, but I, I kind of object. You can double strain this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So my Hawthorne is here in my shaker. Do, 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 and we will double strain. And ordinarily, this would make you one cocktail. I'm going to split this between the two of us and make mine a little lighter. Just because, because I can, because we're going to be doing four cocktails this evening. All right, so this goes off to the side and will be cleaned. Um, so this, dear sweetheart, here is, so your, here is your daiquiri. Keith says... Oh, Keith is commenting. Got a comment from Keith up there. Uh -huh. Oh, hey, Lindsay. Uh, Keith says, I've made daiquiris using your recipe maybe a dozen times since your last lesson. Usually, I, I may have a double. <laughs> well, that's always good news. So apparently, that recipe works for you. Uh, that's awesome. That uh, actually hasn't been all that long um, that I did that lesson for, uh, for work on making cocktails. So that's kind of actually really cool and kind of a statement about uh, this year, I think, on how much all of us are actually drinking now. Um, but I'm glad that you love that. Uh, love the daiquiri, because I know I do. This is, this is my favorite drink for having an expression of rum. 
Um, if I'm not drinking it neat, I want a daiquiri. Um, now, I love mixing rums to create a particular rum profile for a cocktail, but that's not what I want in this case. In this case, I want to really taste that rum, and that's what a daiquiri and is. that does really well in a daiquiri. Does it? Yeah. It's, it smells lovely. Mm hmm Oh, it's got that bracing, refreshing tartness from the lime juice. Simple syrup is, is there, but it's not overly prominent. And I really think that the extra, um, the extra proof on this, the fact that it's a hundred, you know, 55 and a half percent, um, makes a difference from the usual 40, 43 percent uh, alcohol that you have with most of your uh, mainstay, mainstay rums. The rum comes through, but because it is done in the style that it is, it's a very clean rum. There's no, there's no funk associated with it. This is you would never mistake this for a Jamaican rum. Right, right, You'd never right. mistake this for a Demerara rum, and it has taste and flavor and character that would mark it different from, say, some like large mass-produced column still rum, out of Puerto Rico, um, who we won't name. Um, they do some really good work. They're straight up normal brands, uh, not so much. Um, but this, this is quite tasty. Um, I'm actually, I think this does better like this than it did uh, straight on the straight tasting that we did of yeah. the Ron Cologne. I think this is, this works out much better. Um, we said when we drank it the first time that um, this is fine as a sipping rum. I'm not sure I would ever reach for it as a sipping rum. But man, I'd like to mix with this. And there you go. There you have it. This works really, really well as the base for a daiquiri. And now that I have an understanding of how it plays with sweet and sour, I'm going to drink more of it. But it also allows me to do a little more in my head about what other cocktails I could make with this. Um, this reminds me that the other cocktails that I'm going to be making this evening are going to require pineapple juice. So... Once again, I'm going to have to ask my lovely bar back to uh, go fetch me something from the back room uh, because I'm tethered. I, I have a mic. I can't go back there. I'm stuck, so I have to rely on my bar back. That's my story. I'm, I'm sticking to it, just like I'm sticking to my bar. How's that? Mm -mm. Charity is joining us. Yay, Charity. Thank you for dinner. Yes, thank you for dinner. Charity uh, dropped by. Um, some homemade mac and cheese, which we dutifully warmed up and had, um, along with some leftover chicken tenders from KFC. It was, it was a quick dinner and it was quite lovely and we enjoyed it. So you know, there's, we can be all snobbish about other things in our life, but you know, sometimes what you want is just some mac and cheese and some chicken tenders, and that just worked out fine this evening. Thank you. I have pineapple juice. Yes, I know. I know. It's not fresh pineapple juice. I don't always have a pineapple on hand. I don't always make it to the international market. And uh, I just keep cans of this and cans of white grapefruit juice in the back room because of those are the two things that it is hardest to get the juice for. Um, so, yeah, there. Um, I'm not entirely a purist. I, when I want my cocktail, I want my cocktail. And I don't want to have to wait for making a run to the store to get a pineapple. So, there. Um, I'm going to drink more of this daiquiri. Because I can. Um, There's another question. There is another question. Yum pineapple. That's not a question. Yeah. How long will simple syrup last if you make a batch? Well, Lindsay, uh, that depends on the simple syrup. So uh, if you make a one-to-one -one simple syrup, you need to store that in the refrigerator, and it will probably last you a good solid couple of weeks, and you'll be fine. Um, maybe more if you're scrupulous about the cleanliness of your glassware and that sort of thing. However, <laughs> if you make your simple syrup like I do at a two to one of sugar to water, that sucker's shelf stable and that will last well nigh in infinitum. So uh, I do keep mine in the refrigerator because I like having it cold for my cocktails. But uh, yeah, you can keep that as long as as, as long as it sticks around, for the most part. Um, I mean, there's a small chance that you can get something in it that would really, really like sugar and uh, and therefore cause some funkiness to it. But this bottle is actually a couple months old, and it's 
perfectly fine, uh, quite tasty, and there, there's no there's no ick about it. So yeah, do two to one, um, and you're you're golden in that regard. We found out that uh, a lot of the pre-prohibition structures. Right. So uh, Star was pointing out to me that uh, one of the things we we learned uh, a few weeks back was that um, there's probably a good reason why. A lot of these drinks taste better with a two to one uh, sugar, uh, sugar to, to water mix. Um, and that's because in pre-prohibition, you didn't have refrigeration or you had really hard refrigeration. You had like blocks of ice and that sort of thing to, to do, uh, but you didn't have an electronic uh, refrigerator. So making a shelf stable simple syrup was really freaking convenient. And so when I have, whenever I make really early cocktails, I, unless the drink calls for a specific proportion of, uh, uh, of by simple syrup, I'm usually going with a two to one shelf stable uh, simple syrup. So there you go. Um, that uh, pretty much holds true for other variations as well. So if you're doing an infused uh, simple syrup, as long as that sugar ratio is two to one or better, you're pretty well nigh assured to being shelf stable. Now. The infusions get a little dicey because you can always be introducing some sort of bacteria or something uh, in the infusion that is that is weird. So always be careful for that and, and look for little floaties in it and, and that sort of thing. Store it in the refrigerator, you'll be fine. Um, I can't tell you honestly how long the syrup lasts because usually we drink it before it goes bad. So, you know, that's, that's it. Uh, the other nice thing about simple syrup, spice simple syrup, infused simple syrups, is you can use them for everything. I mean, you can use them as a glaze for meats. I've done that before. That's really gorgeous. Um, you can pour them in coffee. You can mix them straight up with like uh, seltzer water or uh, tonic water or something like that and make yourself a homemade soda where you control the exact proportions of sweetness and flavor in it. So there you go. Yep. Um, Brooke asks whether or not I add a little pinch of simple uh, of salt to my simple syrup. Um, I do for my spices and my infusions, but not generally for uh, just my straight up simple syrup. Um, I don't know why. There's just uh, I, the salt. Salt will activate flavors and make flavors more pronounced, and I just don't think I need to do that with the um, with the simple syrup. But when I've got a spice syrup, I really want to play up those flavors. So yeah. We'll use salt in that, but just a tiny little pinch. It's certainly not enough to act as any preservative. Um, things like Orshot, uh, where you're basically doing an almond milk syrup, uh, their lifespan is going to be slightly less. Um, and uh, for those, yeah, adding a pinch of salt um, and adding maybe a little bit of rum or uh, some really high test uh, alcohol like Everclear or 100 proof vodka or something like that will help preserve it just just a tinge. Um, but you're usually not adding enough to where it really has a preservative effect. But, you know, people do. People swear by it. I just drink the stuff before it goes bad. I think that's your best, uh, you know, what's the best way to make sure that you, the ingredients you're using don't go bad? Use them. <laughs> there you go. How's that? Um, so there. Uh, so daiquiri. Uh, daiquiri with the Ron Cologne, that is fine. Um, that extra proof on the wrong cologne really comes through on the daiquiri and makes this thing work. Um, I would, um, I would, I would drink this over, let's say, uh, an analogous rum might be, uh, the Bacardi 8 year, the Bacardi Ocho. I would drink this over the Bacardi Ocho. I think this is a better, better rum for this daiquiri. Um, it is not fair to compare it to the house daiquiri. The house daiquiri uses probitas, um, and probitas is just a more complex rum than this, uh, and has different flavor notes coming through. But this, this is a this is a solid daiquiri. Um, I like this, so we're going to keep that in mind, um, and then I'm going to go back and drink more of the Papa's Pilar. Okay. Oh, and the voice changed all of a sudden. Hmm. Aspirating alcohol will do that. It'll change your voice. Um, what am I doing next? Um, what is this? Is this a variation on the, 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 oh, no, it's the Hawaiian room, Hawaiian room. Sorry. Um, some, I'm going to do it to my wife again. Um, this, this is poor planning on my part. 
It is all my responsibility. Hun sitting in the back room on the back shelf is the bottle of Laird's Applejack. Uh, and if it's not there, it's underneath. So you might want to check there. Um, and I need that for this uh, particular cocktail. So this is a, a cocktail uh, called the Hawaiian Room. I'm going to need to have the recipe in front of me because I do not have it memorized. This again is brought to us by uh, the Total Tiki app from Jeff Beach Bum Berry. Uh, I love this app. You can plug in a series of ingredients and go, uh, give me cocktails that, uh, I can, that I can make with these ingredients. You can put in a particular ingredient and say, give me all the cocktails that require this. And it will give you, okay, there are three cocktails that require that. And there are seven others that require something that you could substitute that for. And immediately you've got a list of tiki cocktails extending back to the earliest days, the 1930s and 40s, up through current, uh, current bartenders just making stuff and doing good things. So um, I love the app. Uh, that way I also have tiki recipes with me all the time and don't have to carry books with me. So that's, that's pretty awesome. All right, so uh, what does this recipe require? So this recipe um, is uh, going to have a, at its base uh, Laird's Applejack, which is, um, well, it's, it's Applejack. It's sort of an apple brandy. Why do I keep pointing it at my computer? That's the, the camera is no longer there. The camera is here. Ta-da, I'm going to have to get used to this. Bear with me. I am not an actor. Uh, I've never been in theater, so, you know, I'm, I think I'm doing okay, uh, as I stand. Um, I need some uh, orange liqueur, and I'm just going to go ahead and reach for the uh, Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao. Um, this cocktail actually specifies triple sec, which is going to be a little on the sweet side. Um, I, I don't feel the need to go grab a bottle of triple sec when I have the Dry Curacao right here. It's going to make for a little drier drink. And I think that's going to make for a better drink uh, because I like a little drier drink. I don't like the overly sweet drinks. Besides, there's a couple of overly sweet drinks later on that we're going to get to. So we're going to make this one dry. Uh, lemon juice, pineapple juice, and then the Ron Cologne. And all of this is going to go in a shaker and then we're going to strain it. So we're going to start here. Um, we need a half ounce of the Pierre Ferrand dry curacao. Dun, dun, dun. And there is nothing in this cocktail that is really thick and gloopy, you know, like the simple syrups uh, usually are. And as a consequence, I'm not starting with a simple syrup. Now, you might know that, uh, again, having watched this a few times, that generally I try to start with the thickest, most viscous substance that I am putting into my cocktail. And then everything else goes into the jigger and helps clear out that jigger uh, of whatever remnants of that thing were. Uh, so I need a half ounce of lemon juice. Lemon juice is over here in this uh, old honey bear bottle. And uh, we need a... That's just a honey. Okay, fine. Half ounce lemon juice. Uh, generally true, uh, at least as, as I can recall, that... Um, Lemon and pineapple often are paired together, but uh, lime and pineapple less so in uh, classic tiki cocktails. So this is sort of an exception to, it's a tiki cocktail, it must have lime juice in it. Um, half ounce of pineapple juice. And we're not going to break a nail. Nope, we are not going to break a nail. A half ounce pineapple juice. Oop. Half ounce of Laird's. This is going to be a little stronger than the original Hawaiian Room cocktail because both the Laird's that we're using and the rum we're using are slightly higher proofs than what would normally be called for. So half ounce of the Laird's, we're using the Laird's 86. Um, so this is 50% apple brandy. Half ounce of that. And then a full ounce of the rum. Rum and apples. What a great combination. Of course, generally I say that pretty much about well, almost anything in rum. <laughs> rum and raisins. What a great combination. Rum and walnuts. What a great combination. Rum and Twinkies. Sure. What a great combination. Because it's rum. What's not to like? Well, we'll find out. I mean, you know, hopefully this is all be going to be fine. 
Uh, I have not done the Hawaiian room before, particularly with this uh, with this rum. So we're going to go on a little bit of an experimentation here. Uh, same basic process. We're going to load this up with some ice. And then we're going to shake the bejesus out of it. There's some ice. Uh, this also is going to be strained. There's no real need to double strain this. Uh, so there we go. Okay, and then we're going to just do a simple strain into a glass. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go, you know, we're just going to reach over for kind of a standard, typical little bamboo cheeky mug and do that. So here is a lesson for all of you that are making tiki drinks and like making tiki drinks. Um, generally, especially if you are making drinks for others, it's always a good idea to know how much beverage is going in your shaker and know what the volume is of your glass. Uh, tiki mugs vary in size and volume, and this is no different than any other tiki mug in the sense that I don't actually know, just glancing at it, what the volumetric uh, contents are. And as a consequence, as I look down here, I could have easily made a double and this would have, and would have gone in here just fine. But we're going to go ahead and give this a try anyway. Star is going to hand me um, a straw. This is a glass straw. Uh, it is made by our friends at Surf, Surfside Sips. Um, it ha it's their tentacle straw, right? Uh, Strawthulu. Strawthulu. And you can tell it looks like a tentacle. It's got like the little tentacle pseudopod on one end and the little stickers there. We're going to stick this in here and see how the Ron Cologne works with uh, Laird's in a uh, classic, I think this is 1960s. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. This is a drink that I think is me and not you. Oh, oh. Wow, the apple is hidden. There's this like lime up front and um, or lemon up front, sorry. Uh, but then uh, when you're finished with that initial burst of flavor that is uh, kind of comes across as almost a little too tart and then bang, there's apple and it comes across Ooh. like a almost like a golden delicious apple. Yeah. Not yeah. not yeah, that's um, that's funky. I like that. That's pretty cool. I I think it could do with a smidge less lemon juice or just a just a tint of some sort of simple syrup or something. Yeah. Just a little sweetness. Yeah. Um, to kind of blend them and it may tie be, those together a little bit. And it may be that in this case the triple sec would have been a better course and having a little bit of sweetness yeah, uh, yeah, would, think, would have worked. I think it would have. I think so, it would have you know, better. So. so what do you know? But you know, my triple sec is on the upstairs bar. I'm not going there. So uh, there you go. I could use Grand Marnier mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure that would have been I'm sure that would have been delightful, actually. Huh? I probably should have done that. Um, all right. So there we go. Uh, how well does the Ron Cologne work in this drink? Um, I can definitely tell there's rum there. Yeah. The drink definitely has. Uh, and let me say this: if I was using something like the Bacardi Ocho, uh, I'm not so sure that I would know how much rum is in this drink, in the sense of uh, while the Ocho has a different flavor profile, without the higher alcohol content, I, I think it might just get lost in the drink. Now, maybe made with the Bacardi Ocho, this drink would blend together into a single flavor profile a little more. But as is, I kind of like the evolution of flavor in this cocktail. So I'm going to keep it as is, but maybe experiment with using Grand Marnier instead of the, uh, uh, the Ferrand uh, Dry Curacao. So there you go. Um, yeah, that's uh, so two out of two. The, the Ron Cologne uh, Salvadoreno uh, 111 proof. If you see it, it's just now coming out. Uh, if it is in your area, I, I'd recommend this. Um, 
and I would recommend trying this in pretty much anything that says, hey, use a Puerto Rican rum or use a Cuban rum in this. So uh, if you didn't hear that, Star was saying that she is uh, in the comments. She has put a link and uh, you should be able to, in some states, order online and go ahead and get yourself a bottle of the Ron Colon. Um, they are not giving us anything uh, to say that. Um, although, of course, we have two bottles that, you know, yes, they gave the they gave us as, as a sample. So, oh, that's right. They, they gave us one other thing, which is, uh, you know, that coffee that is used to flavor this guy? Yeah, they gave us a sample of that coffee, and um, we had that. So, we were watching TV this morning, and one of the things that we have kind of gotten into a habit of doing on Sunday mornings is uh, when we're not quite awake enough to want to get involved in anything that has a plot line, but um, we're still interested in something that will be interesting, entertaining, and potentially educational, uh, we will go to YouTube and we will call up a bunch of episodes from this guy named Greg, uh, who does How to Drink. And uh, Greg has never worked in a bar. He says so at the very beginning of, of every one of his broadcasts. Um, but he does this wonderful little show where he just he makes a cocktail each week and we've been going through them and um he does a really nice job his production setup is amazing and it's very cool and one of the things that he did that we saw this morning because uh, we're going through back episodes and that sort of thing is an homage to uh the dude right the dude uh from from the movie that is currently totally escaping me, uh, The Big Lebowski. Thank you. Um, now, I have to be honest with you. My wife has never seen The Big Lebowski. I've seen, I think, four scenes from The Big Lebowski, so I am not clearly not in the know on The Big Lebowski, but, but uh, I'm certainly an individual that has drunk many, many a white Russian or just a straight Kahlua and cream in my lifetime. It was one of the things I used to drink as an undergrad was a Kahlua and cream. Uh, so we're gonna basically, I, I tried doing uh, a sort of a Kahlua and cream riff or a white Russian riff um, using uh, the Ron Cologne Salvadoreno coffee flavored rum earlier today. And we had some success and we had some not so successful. Um, so what we're going to do is one of the ones that was slightly more successful, um, and we're going to make that for you, and we'll see how that works out. It's going to be awful on my palate because I'm coming off of the daiquiri, which is nice and tart, and if you know anything about white Russians, they are not in any way tart. So this is going to be a little funky on, uh, on my flavor profile. Chris, uh, who's a longtime watcher, and oh, by the way, is doing much better health-wise, so yay! Um, she's doing a reverse Manhattan. Um, with Jack Daniels Rye. Jack Daniels Rye. So, um, my understanding, uh, check me on this, uh, Chris. So, a reverse Manhattan, you're reversing the proportions of the rye and the vermouth, correct? Is that, uh, is that uh, my understanding? Because a Manhattan, right, reverse Manhattan, right, a Manhattan is two ounces of rye, one ounce of usually a sweet red vermouth, and two ounces, uh, two ounces, God, no, not two ounces, two dashes of bitters, usually Angostura. Uh, sometimes that changes depending upon um, what you're using for a red vermouth. Um, so I, I'm assuming that that is what she means by a reverse, is that we've got one ounce of the rye and two ounces of the vermouth. Um, now, it may sound impressive that it's like, oh yeah, Pooch is just rattling off these ratios, like he, he's got all this committed to memory. Manhattan. Manhattan area code is 212. Two ounces rye, one ounce vermouth, two dashes of bitters. That's how you remember a Manhattan. It's a 212 area code. So there you go. Uh, reverse Manhattan is a 122, which to the best of my knowledge is nowhere near Manhattan in terms of an area code. So there you go. So we're going to do, um, I have no name for this. Um, so it's made with rum. So it's not a white Russian. Uh, when uh, the uh, when Greg was making his drink, he also did not like the White Russian that he made. So he made a drink that he called uh, the Black Cuban. Black Cuban. Okay. 
Sorry about the that. Second half. The second half, we're going to use a different camera, and now we can um, actually compare. So when last we left, and uh, I turned around and we had the dropout, um, I had just put in one ounce of heavy whipping cream and one ounce of store-bought eggnog and was moving on to add a sugar component to this. And the sugar component I'm going to use is uh, my spiced syrup. And um, there we go. The lid will now come off. I was mentioning that if you're going to do a live broadcast, um, it is always valuable to test the bottles that you are going to be working with and make sure you can actually get the lids off. So you don't actually have to turn around and um, pour water over the cap in order to get the thing unstuck so that you can, in fact, um, pour. So uh, half ounce. So we got one ounce eggnog, one ounce heavy whipping cream. We're going to go a half ounce of this spice syrup. And yeah, you're right. Um, I did not follow my own instructions of putting the syrup in first. Mm. Wow, that rum is uh, giving me a bit of the uh, giving me a, a bit of the burps, which you know, glad it's good rum. All right, so there's our uh, simple syrup goes in there, and then we are going to go ahead and normally we would add Kahlua to this um, and uh, maybe some rum, but uh, instead we are just going to add the Salvadoreno coffee infused. And here, uh, we're gonna go one ounce of this. So we've got two ounces of milk product, one ounce of um, rum. And this will take care of our Kahlua flavor because the coffee flavor in this rum is actually quite pronounced. I was a little surprised. Um, Star and I are split on this, in fact. Uh, Star actually quite likes it straight um, or maybe over ice. Um, and she's done a couple of other things with it where um, like she's mixed it with Dr. Pepper because apparently Kahlua and Dr. Pepper is a thing. Um, and uh, she mixed it with orange juice. Uh, Kahlua and orange juice, if in the right proportions, actually tastes vaguely like a Tootsie Roll. Um, and she tried that and she was quite love, you know, quite happy with that flavor. So, um, yeah. so there you go. So that, I mean, this works pretty well in terms of having that Kahlua-ish flavor. There's no ice in here. Um, I'm going to do a dry shake with this and then I'm going to put some ice in um, because well, what I really want to do here is get that whipping action on the whipping cream and try and build up some body. Now I got to be careful here because there's there's nothing really cold in here which means this metal is not going to contract and with the metal not contracting this is going to want to blow apart and usually what I do um, or what I've done the last couple of times I tried to do this kind of drink is um, I shake until the point where I can feel this starting to part. And when the pressure is building up to push this apart, I'm going to stop there and then I add ice and do another shake. Uh, but you really want to be careful with this, otherwise you're going to wind up with cocktail everywhere. So here we go. And I'm going to put a hand back here uh, and a hand in front and hold it together as I shake. Got to get some good action on this. Otherwise, you won't get that whip that you really want. Now, if you're doing this all with uh, heavy whipping cream, um, you'll see that it'll end up just coating the inside of this glass. And you'll actually, you can start to get, if you do it vigorously enough, you can get that whipping action and sort of get a little whipped cream consistency. We don't have quite that here. And I'm okay with that. I, I don't think I really want it to be whipped cream level of consistency. I'm looking more for, I don't know, I'd say melted ice cream. Maybe that consistency is what I'm going for with this. I'm gonna close this up and then we'll give this another shake. And got the nice shaker with that on there. All right, cut this open, pop that open. That seal was a lot tighter than the one I had on the dry shake. And then we're gonna use a Hawthorne and uh, we're gonna strain this into, not that glass, this glass over here. Ta-da! Got a small rocks glass. That's what we're gonna strain this into. And ta-da!
Now in a classic white Russian, um, it is served over ice. The, um, the heavy whipping cream is actually just poured over the top. Uh, and so it sort of rests across the top of this very dark drink. Uh, we're not doing that. Um, I tried that earlier. It just didn't work for me. Too different, too many different, there's a textural element of the heavy cream and then getting hit by the rum that I didn't like. So shake this all together and then do a sip. Um, yeah, even uh, when I did the first one and took it up to my wife, uh, she took one sip of it and went, Arr! and then I did this version of it and she was like, oh, this is quite tasty and promptly drank the whole thing. Yeah, that's a that's an adult milkshake right there. Um, and it's very coffee. Uh, the, I still get a little bit of the sort of coffee ground uh, flavor in there. Um, I I feel that I'm getting a little bit of the the Starbuckian burnt coffee aspect, but uh, but I, I don't know. What do you think? You're this is much I more. Like it. This is much more likely your drink than I mine. I like it. So um, there you go. Yeah. Um, there's no Kahlua in there. If I put that in front of somebody and didn't tell them what I had done, they would think that this was either a white Russian or a Kahlua and cream. Yeah. Guaranteed. Um, and so there you go. You don't have any Kahlua on hand, but you got a bottle of this. There you go. I would not substitute this straight uh, for Kahlua because it is not nearly as sweet as the Kahlua. Right. And as a consequence, we had to add the, uh, the syrup in there. Um, and spice also syrup and the eggnog. Yeah, it is, uh, It is. you know, Kahlua is a liqueur. It's a lower proof. This is, once again, clocking in at 111 proof. So that's also, uh, and this would probably be, a, from what I understand, the Lebowski would, uh, in fact, the dude, would, uh, in fact, approve of this because, well, it's a little, got a little more oomph uh, to it. That's really creamy. Um, it's kind of sweet. It's not overly sweet, which is odd. Uh, if, if you'd done that with Kahlua, yeah, it would be totally too sweet for me. Um, what is the consequence? Uh, this sip of the Hawaiian room is probably going to be nasty coming after that uh, coating of heavy cream in my mouth. Um, I, I should point, l l let me point out that, uh, no, 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 I cannot. Hmm. I should point out that, um, can't you your water? My water glass, wow. What's up with that? Water. Um, good disclaimer. Uh, there are certain drinks that you will put in front of people. They will take a sip and go, wow, that's really tasty. I can tell I'm drinking alcohol, but that's really tasty. The daiquiri, um, when done properly, has that aspect. You know that there is alcohol in this when you are drinking it. Um, there was no doubt that there was, uh, that there was rum in that daiquiri that we made earlier. It did not taste like it was 111 proof, but there was definitely that that version of the Kahlua and cream. That does not taste like it is alcoholic. Um, it it tastes like coffee and heavy cream. It's like it, it's almost a, and I find this odd. It's almost like a coffee ice cream, except that my wife doesn't like coffee ice cream and she really likes that. So I don't know what's up with that, but. Um, so that you have to be careful when serving those. Let people know that there's not just some alcohol in there, but you're playing around with some 111 proof stuff. So, yeah. Um, I say this as I listen to my wife slurping the last dregs of that glass down. Uh, it would be very easy to knock back five or six of those with, without any problem. And then as you went to get your seventh and stagger up to the bar, you would be staggering. So um, just be careful on that sort of thing. All right, last last cocktail. Um, there is a drink that we have done here before called the Castaway. Um, the Castaway is a very, very simple drink. The Castaway is basically a pineapple base. It's got three full ounces of pineapple juice in it. To that, you're going to add Kahlua, and then you're going to add rum. That's it. Three ingredients. That's it. That's all that's in the Castaway. And you do have to be a little careful with those proportions depending upon what you're using for a Kahlua. So if you're using um, Kahlua brand Kahlua or Tia Maria, those two are pretty close to one another. You can keep the same basic proportions. We have a homemade Kahlua here 
um, from a recipe from uh, my old high school speech coach, of all people. Um, and it is quite good, but it is not nearly as sweet. And so you would have to change a little bit of the proportions uh, when using that Kahlua. So we also have to kind of play around because we're not going to be using Kahlua. We're going to be using the Ron Cologne. Um, so we have to play around just a little bit. Uh, we're not going to add Kahlua. We're just going to take the amount of Kahlua that would normally be in there, add it to the rum, and then add that to the pineapple juice. So instead of three ingredients, this cocktail comes all the way down to just two ingredients. It's going to be three ounces of pineapple juice, and the rest of that is going to be uh, two, two and a quarter, yeah, two and a quarter ounces of the Ron Cologne coffee flavor. So that's, that's it, that's all. Um, we're going to shake this, but we're going to shake this with a, a little crushed ice uh, this time. We're not going to do that. Um, do, do, do. Yep, that'll work. Uh, all right. So three ounces of, uh, not orange juice, three ounces of pineapple juice. Knock things over on my bar. All right, so there's two ounces of pineapple, and there's a third ounce of pineapple. And what did I say, two and a quarter? I think I said two and a quarter ounces. Double check my math here. Uh, the usual castaway is three quarters of an ounce of Kahlua and an ounce and a half of a Puerto Rican rum. So ounce and a half and three quarters is two and a quarter, right? Who said fractions wouldn't be handy? I don't know. I use them all the time. Okay, so there's a quarter ounce and then two ounces of the wrong cologne. I, I am suspicious of this mixture. Um, I think this may actually be a little too coffee forward, uh, but we'll see because coffee and, oddly enough, coffee and pineapple really go well together. There's a number of sort of classic cocktails that make use of a coffee liqueur and have pineapple juice in them. So, um, you know, that's all kind of cool and weird. Uh, I wouldn't have normally thought. However, however, um, grab yourself a pineapple and cut off the outer rind of the pineapple. You can core it if you want or not. Um, stick that guy in an oven and roast it. And periodically, I mean, roast this for on low heat for a fairly long period of time. You're looking to really caramelize the pineapple juice and the sugars in the pineapple. Um, but what you can do is like every hour, pull it out and baste it with Kahlua. That's tasty. That is, that is some tasty stuff. All right, so this gets uh, done with crushed ice. So we're going to uh, put some crushed ice in here. Um, nice big scoop full of crushed ice. Because we need a little bit more dilution here than we would normally get if we just did this with ice cubes. This is not a really great seal, so this could get real messy real quick. But I've already had enough alcohol that I don't care. I'm going to pour this into a tiki mug. I'm going to reach it. Nah, we're going to do, we're going to do this guy. We're going to do the short guy. So here's a, a simple glass mug with a tiki face on it. Uh, can you see that? What if I do that? Is that, that really doesn't help much, does it? No. Okay. We'll go there. We're just going to pour, dump this right in. There you go. Uh, garnish this. Uh, if you happen to have um, some Pineapple fronds, putting some pineapple fronds on here as a nod to the fact that there's a lot of pineapple juice in here. Uh, if you have some small coffee beans, you could probably dot a couple of coffee beans in the foam here. Because one of the things that's important to note about making tiki drinks, pineapple juice foams. So you can get a nice head of foam on there. We're not going to do that because, well, I don't have any coffee beans here. So I am going to uh, spank some mint. Code name. Right? So there's some mint. It has been spanked. We're going to stick that right just in the middle there. That'll be all purdy like right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I am going to reach over here, and uh, I am going to run a couple of scrapes of cinnamon and a couple of scrapes of nutmeg on that. Make it festive. We're going to make it festive. Yeah, because that looks like, I don't know, snow that brown shit has fallen into, i.e. snow in Washington, D.C. Yeah. All right. So there we go. This is a variation of the castaway, 
that uh, uses no Kahlua in it. It just uses the Ron Cologne. Note, I'm not drinking it. <laughs> Needs a little sweet. Does it? All right. Oh, because the Kahlua, right? Okay. So I should have added some sweet to it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. We can do that. It's too late now, but... No, it's not. No, it's not? What, you want me to just pour some sweet yeah. in there and then you're going to stir it? Yeah. You want the spiced syrup or you want the simple syrup? Simple syrup. So you just want it adulterated with that icky spice stuff. No. Uh, half ounce? Probably a half ounce, right? Probably. Yeah, no more than that, I wouldn't think. No, no more than that. Do, do, do. Uh, this is not recommended technique, by the way, but um, we're trying to make this palatable for my dear wife. So we're going, just going to pour this in like such. Um, so ordinarily, if you were in a bar and uh, the bartender served you this without the uh, syrup in it, and you went, Mm, I need a, I need a little sweetness in this. This isn't really to my taste. He would pour it back in the shaker. Uh, no, he would probably pour it out, ah. and he would pour you another drink. Um, There's one thing uh, that people m maybe don't have a lot there of experience go. going to a bar you um, that's really young. Uh, are intimidated by. If they order something, and it turns out that it is not to your liking... Ask them to make you something else. Um, uh, you know, if the bartender isn't completely and utterly slammed and busy... Um, well, especially this... if you can explain what you don't like about it. Right, right. But, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you're just like, oh, I don't like... before I walk away? Sure. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to stick that in there. We're going to show off these Surfside Sips Cthulhu straw again. He likes it like that. Um, I gotta say, uh, you know, the, it makes the coffee almost chocolate. So the the comment we get is that it makes the chocolate almost uh, makes the chocolate makes the coffee almost chocolatey. So it gives it kind of a mocha esque element to it. I gotta say, I'm I'm not coming up with that. Um, but I think my palate is maybe just. Uh, moved on a little bit from Kahlua that I'm just not a big, 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 big fan of uh, Kahlua in general in, in cocktails. Um, the cast, I mean, the castaway is, is my wife's drink. The castaway, she loves the castaway. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, I, it's not, uh, it's not really my cup of tea. So I'm not, not at all surprised that she really likes this. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I'd drink that. I mean, I wouldn't send it back, but, uh, I would go in a different direction next time around. So um, it is not surprising to me at all that uh, uh, our initial tastes of these two rums have led us to these differing paths. Um, we both like the Ron Cologne Salvadorano uh, straight up high test rum, non-infused rum. We like this stuff. Uh, this is a great substitution for any Puerto Rican rum that you've got out there. It's got a little more character to it. Um, it, uh, it would be comparable, I think, to maybe, in, uh, certainly in the Bacardi Ocho, maybe the Ron de Baralito, three star, two star, maybe, uh, although the Baralito has a little more character than this. Um, but it's in, that, it's in that realm. So uh, yeah, solid, solid rum. I have a little bit more, uh, so I did not, I honestly did not like this upon uh, first taste. Um, and uh, I went, I think this has to go in cocktails for me to be really liking this. Star likes it, um, and she likes it even more in cocktails. And so it does not surprise me that everything I have made tonight with this in here, with maybe some playing around, has been something she liked. So if you're a fan of coffee-flavored liqueur and drinks that make use of coffee-flavored liqueur, uh, I think this is a, a beautiful choice for you. It's just, it's maybe not my cup of tea. It's certainly my wife's cup of tea, so to speak, or a cup of rum. So, I mean, this, this works really nicely. Thing to remember about this, though, it is not Kahlua. It has the coffee flavor, but it does not have the sweetness. So as a consequence, as we learned on the last drinks, on the last two drinks, 
you're going to have to add a little more sweet component to your mixing in order to make this work as a sort of, not as a Kahlua substitute, but as a Kahlua alternate. So there we go. We've got uh, two drinks made with the Ron Cologne unadulterated, dun dun dun, and two drinks made with the Ron Cologne coffee. Um, I think these would be solid additions. Um, the This one is... The, uh, the unadulterated is probably a little more versatile, is definitely more versatile. Um, but if you're looking for something that's got that coffee essence to it, and I am given to understand that the Salvadorans really like coffee and rum, so, you know, that, that works for them. Um, but this is also, uh, this would be a strong, a strong addition if you're looking for that sort of flavor profile. Star wants me to say, what else did I get this week? So, um... Well, we've already shown this at the top of the class. Top of the class? Top of, yeah, sorry, old habits. Um, at the top of the discussion. So uh, you probably know I'm a big fan of uh, Bayesian rum, particularly things put out by Foursquare Rum. Richard Seale is a god when it comes to rum and is master distiller over at Foursquare. He knows more about rum than most people will ever... He has forgotten more about rum than most people will ever know including many, many, many rum experts. Um, and so when I see something that has got his personal stamp on it, it, it garners my interest. So uh, they, um, Foursquare and Total Wine um, got together relatively early on in Total Wine's uh, lifespan when Foursquare was just trying to distribute to the United States. And rather than get on board with a major distributor, they went directly to, to uh, Total Wine. And so they have this nice ongoing relationship with them and uh, yeah, an exclusive contract to sell their Dorley's brand, which is a four square rum uh, at Total Wine in the United States. You can get it outside the United States in other places, but inside the United States, it's Total Wine or nothing if you want to get their Dorley's. And their Dorley's expressions are quite good. Um, I prefer the 12 year to the XO, but the Dorley's is, the Dorley's is a solid, solid rum. This, this is the Master Series. Um, and this is apparently only available from Total Wine and is uh, distilled and blended for them. Um, so I am really looking forward to this. This is matured in ex-bourbon and ex-sherry casks and aged 12 years. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be fun. Really looking forward to opening this one. We're probably going to hold off and maybe do that like uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas sometime. Because uh, this, yeah, this, is, this is a bit of a, a specialty. Every time I make a Mai Tai or... 90% of the time when I'm making Mai Tais, um, I'm using a blend of rums. I tend to use a Jamaican rum, like uh, the Plantation Jamaica, mixed with an aged rum agricole. So rum agricoles uh, are made from fresh sugarcane juice instead of using molasses as their base. Uh, there's a couple of other, you know, if, if they really want to be a true rum agricole, they have to come from Martinique and all, all sorts of other things. Um, the My choice of rum agricoles and this may be entirely because this is what I can get locally um, on a consistent basis, is Clement brand. And I have several of their uh, aged expressions. I have their VSOP, I have their XO. Uh, I have their VSOP, I have their select, and now I have their XO. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to getting into this and seeing uh, what happens as you put just a little more age on the rum agricole. So, one thing that is true in general of rum agricoles is that there is a, a stronger herbaceous and grassy note because it doesn't go through this intermediate process of being changed over to molasses. It's like gnawing on sugarcane, which for very, very young rum agricoles uh, can be a little off-putting. Um, I mean, it really is a lot like gnawing on the end of a, of a really juicy piece of sugarcane. Adding some age to that really it keeps that essence of it, but it blunts the worst edges. Um, and so, you know, I really like the VSOP. I'm really looking forward to the XO and thinking that uh, maybe just a straight up uh, some XO in a glass, maybe with a rock, would be a, a quite tasty way to spend an evening where I want a different kind of expression of rum. Uh, this is, rums made from sugarcane are completely different in flavor and complexity than rums made from molasses. There, there's night and day. Um, if you, if you like rum and are interested in rum, um, to where you delve in, you will almost assuredly be easily able to tell 
a molasses-based from a sugarcane-based rum. For folks that are playing around with rum, you know, that are at the, um, you know, for whom, say, pirate is still considered a premium rum, uh, at that level of understanding uh, and uh, delving into the world that is rum, um, if you had a glass of a molasses-based rum and a glass of sugarcane-based rum, you would say the molasses-based stuff is rum, and you wouldn't know what the hell that agricole is. <laughs> Uh, because the flavor profile is just so, so different. Um, I think it is important if you are asking somebody whether they or not they like this rum uh, when you give, go to give it to them, let them know whether it is molasses-based or sugarcane-based because their brain is going to be expecting something else if you just plop an agricole in front of them and let them taste it. And uh, so that will be, uh, that will be kind of... Um, that would be kind of sad and strange. So you got to kind of prime the pump and go. This is going to be a different kind of rum than what you're uh, what you're used to. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to have to call Brooke uh, because we're going to have to do our tasting of the uh, this evening's rum advent calendar. Um, so we will find out what uh, what wonderful things are in store for us. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the hint that my dear wife has put on this bottle is that it is made with fresh cane juice. Which, you know, I'm looking over here at this Clement XO going, oh, uh -huh, so we're in the agricole frame of mind. All right, so there we go. Um, it's got some age on it because it's got uh, uh, some darkness to it. And if it's, well, if it's Clement, it's got some darkness to it. That means barrel aging. So, uh, yeah, my brain's already trying to think of, huh, I wonder what that is in there. So anyway, uh, that is... Episode 36. Thanks for tuning in, taking time out of your busy su last Sunday before the Christmas holiday uh, to spend some time with me and my lovely wife. Uh, we love having you here, and as things plan now, we are in fact still planning on doing a post-Christmas uh, Quarantiki uh, this coming Sunday. We've got Quarantiki number 37 coming up and will be the last one of 2020. If you wish to do a and non-advent calendar, a post-Christmas advent calendar this year. Like, so you didn't get one for advent, but you'd kind of like the idea of tasting like 24 days worth or of... Or chocolate or whatever. Or chocolate or whatever, right. You want to do, you know... What, so advent calendar is 24 days long. Uh, so if you start the day after Christmas, um, as it will turn out, your advent calendar will wind up on Inauguration Day. So I'm just going to leave that out there. Just... Put that out. There you go. Into the world. There we are. All right. Uh, we're going to end it here. We'll talk to you later. See you on Sunday. Hope all of you have a glorious uh, set of holidays because Lord knows we need it. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Have a great holiday. Ooh, spooky face. Let's not spotlight my face. Let's not do that. <laughs>